one of the most valuable processes that I've used in R&D is just increasing my rate of failure. Every time I fail, it's an opportunity to learn something. So it's actually something that I become very excited about. If I fail, you know, my heart rate goes up and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to know what, what I get to learn from this failure. So one of the things that I focus on a lot at Peachy Printer is keeping the rate of failure very high. Right now that means really small prints so that when something goes wrong, it doesn't take, uh, you know, an hour. The print only takes two minutes or maybe 10 minutes and we can learn something very quickly make an improvement, and keep learning. One of the best uh, high failure rate objects that's just very simple to compare to the, the, last, uh, the last one we did and the next one we've done, and, and really we, you, we need to just print the same thing over and over and compare the different settings that we've run on the printer. One of the best things to print is columns. And uh, so I've been printing a lot of square columns recently just to test out the different settings and push the different limits that, that uh, the printer has. So column prints are, are just a, a wonderful thing to do in the beginning stages of a printer. So to attempt to get the very best print possible with P22, I gave the printer a very small aperture, so we would have a very small wall size and a very small focus spot. I moved the printer very close to the resin, only about uh, 15 centimeters away. That enables it to focus better. And I did a huge number of layers per second over a very long time. So I did uh, six layers per second over 20 minutes and I really gave the print a lot of time to rise. So over the course of 20 minutes that gives us 7,200 layers just in this one small print. And it's just amazing how clear this print is. It, it basically looks like glass. We're very happy with this print. And it shows us that uh, if we let the printer really take its time, that it can do amazingly high quality prints. Back in print 75, we really did everything we could to get the print to be as accurate as possible. But that print took 20 minutes and that's, a, that's pretty long for such a small print. So I tried doing in print 78, uh, just basically speeding things up, but still aimed for a really high quality print. And that's exactly what we got. The changes I made were I went from a 0.3 millimeter aperture to a 1 millimeter aperture, giving us a lot more light. And uh, we're still curing it on a pretty small dot, so we actually have more light um, on every pass. And so it happens faster. And we were still able to get a really high quality print, and this time it only took five minutes to do this, to this uh, object, which was bigger in every way. So I'm, I'm still really impressed with the settings here. And I don't think that we're pushing any of the boundaries of the printer with this print because it's, it's basically, it, it printed uh, really solid. Uh, it wasn't under cured and uh, everything went pretty well. In print 76, I really wanted to push the speed at which the printer could go, really push the limits. So I did this print in only a minute and 48 seconds and it's about 34 millimeters tall. We've got about 2,400 layers in this print, and we did 23 layers every second. So I had to do a lot of layers per second to keep up with the, the speed to get that many layers in this print in only a, a minute and 48 seconds. We, we got a lot of artifacts in the Z. So although we did do 23 layers a second with the laser, I don't think that the resin had time to really break over and and actually get caught by that or cured by that uh, that light that often. So what we see in the actual print is probably a lot less than 2,400 layers because the resin just didn't come in to get cured often enough. So in the next print I printed even more layers per second to see if I could get rid of these artifacts that we were seeing in, in the Z and we did not get rid of them. So that, that tells us something in print 77. So here I've done uh, basically a very similar print I've gone just as fast in the Z. It only took two minutes to print this. And I've sped up the amount of layers I'm printing every second, the, the speed that the laser is actually doing the square loop. And here I've done 35 layers every second. That's a lot of layers every second and the laser is just a blur to the human eye. So we've learned from this print 
that we still have the same Z artifacts, uh, the same rough look to the print that we had in the last print. So it's really probably is this breakover problem that the resin isn't coming in fast enough. It's not that we didn't actually have the laser doing enough layers, it's that the resin hasn't come in fast enough. So what we need to do to get these prints to go this fast is really a thinner resin that flows in and over the wall that you're printing faster. So we'll be working on that in the future. So in print 79 I wanted to test out how sensitive is this printer to vibration, room vibration. You know, I printed, I printed uh, using this printer on like a, a really shaky table um, and I just, I wasn't careful at all. I actually, I actually cleaned up while the printer was printing. I kicked the table with my foot a couple times. Uh, I was, you know, typing on my computer right beside the printer and, and everything was just on this uh, pretty rickety table and was just shaking around. So we can see that uh, this, this did affect the print Although I've got to say it was a pretty harsh test and I'm, pr I'm really impressed that it finished at all. So uh, we can see that we have basically a gap up the whole side of, uh, of uh, the column. And that gap I think was caused when I bumped the printer early on. It failed to do part of that layer and then, uh, and then it just had nothing to uh, print on top of after that. So that gap sort of carried up throughout the whole print. And then also, you can see that we've, we've got a couple spots where the, uh, the whole column kind of moves over like it's, like it's being reset. And I'm pretty sure that's where I kicked the table and, and really gave the whole printer a good jar. And, you know, the, the printer is uh, susceptible to these kinds of things if, if you're really rough with it. So it's probably best to print in a still situation on a stable base. And that's something that, that goes for all 3D printers, really. Um, any any kind of harsh room movement isn't isn't good for your prints. In print 80 I actually accidentally ran out of resin. So I didn't mean to at all. I mean I wasn't going trying to test the printer to find out what happens when you run out of resin, but I found out anyways and and basically what happened was on the surface of the water there was uh places that had resin and then there was sort of open puddles of water uh, in in the area that we were doing the print. So amazingly the print still finished and it just sort of has holes all over the place where there was no resin at the time. And uh, yeah, that was just an interesting print and answers the question, you know, what do your prints look like as you run out of resin? Of course you always need to add the correct amount of resin so that uh, you'll have enough left to cover the surface of the water by the end of your print. And the software that runs the printer will tell you exactly how many milliliters of resin your print's going to consume. So this shouldn't be uh, something that's hard to avoid at all. So these column prints have been a really valuable exercise and we've, we've learned some really important things, uh, some really promising things really, because we've learned that it's pretty easy to get the printer tuned to do, to do well. It's not like walking on a knife edge, just, there's actually quite a wide range that it works well in, and it's pretty robust in finishing prints already. Uh, and that's, you know, just without even knowing what numbers to punch in. So that's really promising. Uh, and it's something that I didn't know back when I was working on this alone, uh, back when I was basically just working with uh, P18, um, and wasn't, wasn't making all fire? these... Oh my god, that light fell over. Oh, that's not a fire. Oh, well, it's just some smoke. God, you scared me. The motor was on fire and it was burning through the door. Okay. Well, it was worth mentioning halfway through the recording. Maybe. I was almost done. Well, that's what happens when you don't duct tape it on. Get Nathan, can we leave that in there? So overall, I'm just really impressed with the column prints and, and how the whole process went. I'm really happy that we're still sticking to small prints that don't take long so that we can learn things quickly. And I'm very excited to see uh, just how much better this printer can get. You know, seeing as it's already doing very well and we haven't fixed uh, a lot of issues, for example, memory, uh, we haven't fixed that at all. So this is P22 we've been printing with here and P23 will fix a whole bunch of new issues that, uh, that we've become aware of 
and I'm just really excited to see this printer do even better than it's done in these tests. Thanks for all your support backers, it's just been wonderful to uh, have all the ideas that are flowing in, um, we're, we're actually using many of them, so keep them coming and uh, keep, keep being very involved because this is a, a community project and uh, all of that involvement is really adding up to this printer uh, being the best it can be. So thank you backers, not only for your money, but also for your ideas and your involvement. It's just phenomenal to have all that help.